Emmett, Lewis Till, man. Emmett Lewis Till, man. Till arrived at the home of Mose and Elizabeth Wright in Money, Mississippi on August 21st. 1955. That's the home right there, y'all. That's the home right there, man. Where Emmett Till was, man. Emmett Till. Emmett Till. Y'all, the, the one they always go back to, man. They gonna bring up Emmett Till, man. They gonna they gonna bring up Emmett Till, man. If, if, listen, man, that shit is disgusting to me, man. I find that shit disgusting that they keep talking about that boy Emmett Till, though. I'm gonna put this up on the screen while I um read this for y'all, man. I just want y'all to see that I'm reading from Wikipedia, man. We reading from Wikipedia, man. We reading from Wikipedia, man. Let me show y'all, man. I'm reading from Wikipedia, y'all. Okay? That's Carolyn Bryan on the left. She was 21 years old. Carolyn Bryant was 21 years old when this happened, man. Till and several young relatives and neighbors were driven by his cousin, Maurice Wright, to Bryant's grocery store. So Carolyn Bryant and her husband owned a grocery store. And meat market to buy candy. So Till's companions were children of sharecroppers and had been picking cotton all day. <laughs> These niggas were still picking cotton in 1955, man. These niggas were still picking cotton in 1955. The market mostly served the local sharecropper population and was owned by a white couple, 24-year-old Roy Bryant, and his 21-year-old wife, Carolyn. Carolyn was alone in the front of the store that day. Her sister-in-law, Juanita Milm, Milm, Milam, was in the rear of the store watching children. A number of other locals, youths, were playing or watching a checkers game on the board the Bryants had set up outside the store. The facts of what took place in the store are still disputed. Journalist William Bradford Huey reported that Till showed the youth outside the store a photograph of a white girl in his wallet and bragged that she was his girlfriend. Till's cousin, Curtis Jones, said the photograph was of an integrated class at a school Till attended in Chicago. So Till was from Chicago. He was from Chicago. <laughs> and I said, we're going to get to Chicago next, man. We're going to get to Chicago right after this, man. According to Huey and Jones, one or more of the local boys then dared Till to speak to Carolyn Bryant. However, in his book, in his 2009 book, Till's cousin Simeon Wright, who was present, disputed the account of Huey and Jones. According to Wright, Till did not have a photo of a white girl, and no one dared him to flirt with Bryant, which is all, all irrelevant. 
speaking in 2015, Wright said, we didn't dare him to go to the store. The white folks said that. They said that he had pictures of his white girlfriend. There were no pictures. They never talked to me. They never interviewed me. The FBI report completed. In 2006 notes, Curtis Jones recanted his, two, his 1955 statements prior to his death and apologized to Mammy Till Mobley. So he gave a different statement back in 1955. Now, now he's saying that it's something different happened. According to Simeon Wright and Wheeler Parker, Till Wolf whistled at Bryant. Wright said, I think Emmett wanted to get a laugh out of us or something. Adding, he was always joking around and it was hard to tell when he was serious. Wright stated that following the whistle, he became immediately alarmed. Well, it scared us half to death, Wright recalled. You know, we were almost in shock. We couldn't get out of there fast enough because we had never heard anything like that before. A black boy whistling at a white woman. We were almost in shock. We couldn't get out of there fast enough. In Mississippi, the Ku Klux Klan and Night Riders were a daily part of our lives. Following his disappearance, a newspaper account stated that Till sometimes whistled to alleviate his stuttering. His speech was sometimes unclear. His mother said he had particular difficulty pronouncing B sounds. And me, he may have whistled to overcome problems asking for bubble <laughs> You hear that shit? So now he now he was whistling because he the whistling helped him stutter, man. He, he stuttered and, and, and whistling helped when he stuttered, man. He he whistled to overcome his stuttering. He wasn't whistling at the white woman. And listen, I don't care whether he was whistling at the white woman or not, man. Cause none of this matters. When them, when when they come when he was in the house with his with, with, with the family who his mother entrusted him to, and two white dudes knocked on the door, and that nappy headed nigga gave him over to that nappy headed Negro handed him over to them two drunk white dudes, man. So none of this matters, man. It wouldn't matter if he 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 he, he smacked her on the ass. During the murder trial, Brian testified that Till grabbed her hand while she was stocking candy and said, how about a date, baby? <laughs> she said that after she freed herself from his grasp, the young man followed her to the cash register, grabbed her waist and said, what's the matter, baby? Can't you take it? Brian said she freed herself and Till said, you needn't be afraid of me, baby. Used one unprintable word and said, I've been with white women before. Bryant also alleged that one of Till's companions came into the store, grabbed him by the arm and ordered him to leave. According to historian Thomas Timothy Tyson, Bryant admitted to him in 2008 interview that her testimony during the trial that Till had made verbal and physical advances was false. Brian had testified Till grabbed her waist and uttered obscenities, but later told Tyson that part's not true. As for the rest of what happened, the 72-year-old stated she could not remember. Brian, so why did the friend, hold on, why did, hold on, why was all the friends scared? This is this is confusing to me. All the friends were scared. Press one. All the friends were scared. They couldn't get out of there fast enough. Remember the friends? We couldn't get out of there fast enough. All the friends was terrified at whatever whatever Emmett Till was doing. Press one. Go up on the sun man's what um um woman and grab her by the arm and start sweet talking to some sun man's woman. A sun man that cut you open like a goddamn tuna. 
A sub man will cut you open like a goddamn tuna. Cut you open like one of them Coke packages in the movie and shit. Some man will cut your ass open. Come man, some man will slice you in half like a watermelon. You see, you say something to his woman. They try to act like this is something unique to fucking white people. So basically, the only part of the dispute that he grabbed her waist, but everyone agrees that he grabbed her her arm. And listen, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it don't matter. That boy went home to his, to the house where his he was staying, and there was a man in that house. So whatever that boy did, he was in a house. He 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 made it home, and he was in the house with that man. And his family. So when Roy Bryant, who was Carolyn Bryant's husband, was informed of what had happened, he aggressively questioned several young black men who entered the store. So Roy Bryant was on the war path after, after he heard about that, man. He like some sun word and fucking grabbed up to, to touch my woman. Some goddamn sun word. He aggressively questioned several young black men who entered the store. That evening, Roy Bryant with a black man named J.W. Washington. with a black man named J.W. Washington. That evening, Roy Bryant, with a black man named J.W. Washington, approached a black teenager walking along a road. Bryant ordered Washington to seize the boy, put him in the back of the pickup truck, and took him to be identified by a companion of Carolyn Bryant, who had witnessed the episode with Tim. So he got the black dude to kidnap a black boy. Roy Bryant was with a black dude, and he got that black dude to kidnap some random black boy and took him in for questioning. If you don't believe me, it's right here. This is Wikipedia. This is not like some white right ring. This ain't Fox News. This ain't none of that shit. This is straight from the record. That evening, Roy Bryant with a black man named J.W. Washington approached a black teenager walking along a road. Roy Bryant ordered J.W. Washington to seize the boy, put him in the back of a pickup truck, and took him to be identified by a companion of Carolyn Bryant, who had witnessed the episode with Till. Friends or parents vouched for the boy in Bryant's store, and Carolyn's companion denied that the boy Bryant and Washington had seized was the one who had accosted her. Somehow, Bryant learned that the boy in the incident was from Chicago, and he was staying with Mose Wright. So that's son. So 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 they they already kidnapped one black kid, but they let him go. They let the they let him go. They let the one they let the one son team go after they after they took him, and and, the, and everybody said, nope, that's not him. That's not the Negro. That's not the Negro that got fresh with your wife. That's not him. They let him go. Hank Hill says, it's never pointed out how hot Carolyn Bryant would have been in those days. The whole charm would have said smash on her. No chat would have said smash. 
facts. Boy, Kachina says she asked him to bust up a chiff chiff a rope. The fuck is that? So moving along, he was in the house of Mose Wright. Mose Wright. So you got this boy in your house, his per, his mother, the fucking entrusted you, entrusted you to keep that boy safe. And what you do, what did you do, Mose Wright? The mother done entrusted you to keep that boy safe. And what did you do, Mose Wright? That's Mose Wright right there. That's the man who had Emmett Till, who Emmett Till was staying with. Somehow, Roy Bryant learned that the boy in the incident was from Chicago and was staying with Mose Wright. Several witnesses overheard Bryant and his 36-year-old half-brother, John William J.W. Milam, discussing taking Till from his house. In the early morning hours of August 28, 1955, sometime between 2 and 3.30 a.m., Roy Bryant and Milam drove to Mose Wright's house. Milam was armed with a pistol and a flashlight. He asked Wright if he had three boys in the house from Chicago. So two son, two, two gliders come up to the door, two white boys. It wasn't a mob. It wasn't a mob. Press one if you thought it was a mob. Press one if you thought it was a mob. Press one if you thought it was a mob. It was two white boys came up to the fucking house. It wasn't no fucking mob. It was the fucking the fucking um husband who was mad and his brother-in-law. Two white boys came up to the house. Milam was armed with a pistol and a flashlight. He asked Wright if he had three boys in the house from Chicago. Till was sharing a bed with another cousin, and there were a total of eight people in the cabin. Milam asked Wright to take them to the nigger who did the talking. Till's great aunt offered the men money, but Milam refused as he rushed Emmett to put on his clothes. Mose Wright informed the men that Till was from up north and didn't know any better. Milam reportedly then asked, how old are you, preacher? To which Mose Wright responded, 64. Milam threatened that if Wright told anybody, he wouldn't live to see 65. The men marched Till out to the truck. Wright said he heard them ask someone in the car if this was the boy and heard someone say yes. When asked if the voice was that of a man or a woman, Moe's Wright said it seemed like it was a lighter voice than a man's. In a 1956 interview with Look Magazine in which they confessed to the killing, Roy Bryant and Milam said they would have brought Till by the store in order to have Carolyn identify him, but stated they did not do so because they said Till admitted to being the one who had talked to her, who had talked to her. Wow. Press one if you shocked by this so far. Press one if you shocked by this so far. It was two guys. 
And this dude allowed those two guys. He allowed those two guys to take that boy out that house. He allowed them two guys to take that boy out that house. Two. It wasn't no mob. It wasn't the clan. It wasn't this, that, and the third. Everybody, the, the whole powers of the country. It wasn't the whole town with pitchforks and torches. It was two dudes rolled up and said, give us the nigga." Oh, but it gets better. Watch this, though. Watch this, though. I'm going to have to go to the screen because you ain't going to believe this. You have to see it for yourself. Watch this, though. So Milam reportedly then asked Mose Wright, how old are you, preacher? To which Mose Wright responded, 64. Milam threatened that if Mose Wright told anybody, he wouldn't live to see 65. The men marched till out to the truck. Okay, so now they're in the truck with Emmett Till. Now they got Emmett Till in the truck. They tied up Till in the back of a green pickup truck and drove towards Money, Mississippi. According to some witnesses, they took Till back to Bryant's groceries and recruited two black men. According to some witnesses, they took Emmett Till back to Bryant's grocery store and recruited two black men. The men then drove to a barn in Drew, Mississippi. They pistol whipped Emmett Till on the way and reportedly knocked him unconscious. According to some witnesses, they took Till back to Roy Bryant's grocery store and recruited two black men. The men then drove to a barn in Drew, Mississippi. They pistol whipped Emmett Till on the way and reportedly knocked him unconscious. You don't get this nowhere else, man. You don't get this nowhere else. This the only channel you gonna get this, man. This ain't my opinion. This ain't somebody that called in and said what they heard or what their cousin that told them. This is the only channel where you gonna get to get this. This the only channel, and I'm gonna bring y'all up after I finish this, man. Because we gotta go to Chicago, modern day Chicago, and see what the Sun Teens is doing today, man. Thank God they ain't lynching Sun Teens today, man. You say it's wiki chill. What you mean is wiki chill? They wiki get this from sources, man. What are you talking about, wiki chill, man? I'm about to start blocking people, man. All this stuff is from the from the record, man. All this stuff is from the record, man. All this stuff is from the record, man. There's citations, man. There's citations, man. You see these citations, man? You see these citations, man? All this stuff is from the record, man. They they cite everything. That last line is from the LA Times, the most liberal newspaper on the West Coast. They cite, man. It's over 200 citations in this one fucking wiki, man. What are you talking about, man? Somebody time whoever said that shit out, man. Who just said that shit, man? Who just said that shit, man? 
Who just said it's wiki? Let me see. I'm not, I'm not going to time my mind. I'm going to get somebody else to do it, man. It's 200 citations in this fucking thing, man. This ain't some book written by some jail nigga who came home from jail and wrote a book. There's 200 citations in this thing, man. Okay, so we got a timeout. Um, hold on, let me see timeout. This guy, I t- I find him. I, I found him. I got him. We're gonna time him out. Lucky I ain't, I ain't gonna block y'all, man, because I don't want to be. I don't want to be bad guy today, man. I'm be nice today, man. I'm. This is my first day back. I took two days off, man. I took two days off, man. That's like a normal YouTuber taking off a month. Me taking two days off is like a normal YouTuber taking off a month. So I'm going to be nice, man. Salute to Don Wrinkles, man. Don Wrinkles say payment for your J.J. Reddick rant the other day. He's a toolbox. Yeah, man, I appreciate you, Don Wrinkles, man, coming through. Don Wrinkles, man. Love to see new names, man. Um. Yeah, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna block you. Hank Hill says Emmett Till was a murder combined with witness intimidation, not a lynching. Blacks do that a hundred times a month. <laughs> yeah, man, there's two hundred citations in this, man. Every fucking line is cited in this. You got citation right here, citation right here. This line is from. Counting on time to break a silence. Another Los Angeles time. A lot of these are cited by, look, this is a Chicago Tribune. These are woke liberal newspapers they got this shit from. Yeah, man, anybody say something else about that, man, and then they don't say shit when, when I read some shit some, somebody sent me. Somebody sent me some shit from some goddamn random ass fucking newspaper, some some shit, and then y'all y'all don't question that shit, but y'all gonna question an article with two hundred citations? Two hundred? Anyway, back to the topic, man. They tied up Till in the back of a green pickup truck and drove toward Money, Mississippi. According to some witnesses, they took Till back to Bryant's groceries and recruited two black men. The men then drove to a barn in Drew, Mississippi. They pistol whipped him and Till on the way and reportedly knocked him unconscious. Willis Reed. Willis Reed. Willis Reed, who was 18 years old at the time. Not that Willis Reed who played for the Knicks, but another Willis Reed. Willie Reed, who was 18 years old at the time, saw the truck passing by. Reed recalled seeing two white men in the front seat and two black males in the back. Okay? So there are two white men in the front seat and two white black males in the back, and of course Emmett Till laying down in the bed of the pickup truck unconscious. So the guy didn't see Emmett Till because Emmett Till was unconscious, laying down. Some have speculated that the two black men worked for Milam and were forced to help with the beating, although they later denied being present. So what do you think about the, the two black men? People think that the two black men was forced to help with the beating. Who thinks that they were forced to help? Or that they did it on their own volition, man? One, if you think they were forced to help. Two, if you think they did it on their own volition, man. And we're going to get into Chicago after this. I'm about to wrap this up, man. Willie Reed said that while walking home, he heard the beating and crying from the barn. He told a neighbor that they both walked back up the road 
to a water well near the barn where they were approached by Milam. Milam asked if they heard anything. Reed responded, no. Others passed by the shed and heard yelling. A local neighbor also spotted two tight Leroy Collins at the back of the barn washing blood off the truck. Two tight Leroy Collins. That's a brother right there. Two tight Leroy Collins was at the back of the barn washing blood off the truck. So a neighbor seen him, seen two tight Leroy Collins destroying evidence and covering up the crime. And they noticed Emmett Till's boot. Milan explained he had killed a deer and that the boot belonged to him. Some have claimed that Till was shot and tossed over the Black Bayou Bridge in Glendora, Mississippi, near the Tallahatchie River. The group drove back to Roy Bryant's home and money, where they reportedly burned Emmett Till's clothes. In an interview with William Bradford Huey that was published in Look Magazine, in 1956, Brian and Milam said that they intended to beat Till and throw him off an embankment into the river to frighten him. They told Huey that while they were beating Till, he called them bastards, declared he was as good as they, and said that he had sexual encounters with white women. They put Till in the back of their truck and drove to a cotton gin to take a 70-pound fan, the only time they admitted to being worried, thinking that by this time in early daylight they would be spotted and accused of stealing, and drove for several miles along the river looking for a place to dispose of Till. They shot him by the river and weighed his body with the fan. Moe's right, who's our guy who let him... <laughs> Let him let them take him. He stayed on his porch for 20 minutes waiting for Till to return. <laughs> you just gave the little boy, you just gave the little boy to fucking uh, two drunk white dudes, and you talking about you waiting, you on a porch waiting for him to return. He did not go back to bed. He and another man went into money, got gasoline, and drove around trying to find Till. Unsuccessful, they returned home by 8 a.m. After hearing from Wright that he would not call the police because he feared for his life, Curtis Jones placed the call to the LaFleur County Sheriff and another to his mother in Chicago. Distraught, she called Emmett Till's mother, Mammy Till Bradley. Wright and his wife, Elizabeth, drove to Sumner where Elizabeth's brother contacted the sheriff. So Emmett Till was killed by at least three black guys and two white guys. At least three black guys and two white guys was involved in the murder. At least three, at least three black guys. You got the one who kidnapped the other black boy who was helping find Emmett Till. But he they kidnapped the wrong guy the wrong boy, and they had to let him go. Then you got the two that was recruited from the grocery store that pistol whipped him unconscious. And how do we know, how do we know he wasn't dead yet? How do we know he wasn't, how do we know that they didn't deliver the mortal wounds, the two black dudes that pistol whipped Emmett Till, till he was unconscious? And you know how violent that is to pistol with somebody unconscious? You know how violent that is to pistol with somebody unconscious? And then you got Mose Wright, the man whose house he was at. Who was in charge? Who was his custodian? Who was basically had custody of him? 
was his chaperone, was his guardian, who gave him up to the two white men, who then, who had a whole gang of black men that was involved in this. And this, and this, and this precious white angel here has 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 bared the brunt of all this for all this time. <laughs> This white angel, this this queen of purity, has 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 footed the proverbial bill for all this Emmett Till crap for all these years. You believe that, man? It's a travesty, man, what they did to this 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 white angel, this 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 angel of purity. <laughs> All she did was tell her husband that some dude tried to fucking push up on her. Press one if you would want your wife to tell you that. Press one if you would want your wife to tell you that, man. Hey man, um, some little fucking sun word tried to got aggressively pushed up on me today, man, in our store, man. All she did was tell her husband what happened, man. That's all she did. He got drunk, got his boys. He had, a, he, he had three sun words in his crew. Carolyn Bryant's husband had three sun words in his crew, man. Three sun men. Oh, she didn't tell him the husband turned to her about his second hand. Oh, that's even worse. Bitch, you ain't tell me about that shit. You raggedy bitch, you must have wanted it. <laughs> oh, she tried to keep it from him. Yeah, man, this angel of purity, man. This pure angel, she had to live her fucking 92 years. That's probably why God let her live that long. God was like, man, it's fire how they doing you. I'm going to let you live. I'm going to let you outlive all these niggas. God was like, I'm going to let you outlive all these niggas. Carolyn Bryan is, where them two niggas that pistol whipped Emmett Till unconscious? Where the other nigga that kidnapped the little black boy who who'd had nothing to do with it? And brought him to the um, witnesses to see the, the, the to see if the, that he was the boy who did it. And the witnesses said, "No, he's not the one who um, pushed up on Carolyn Bryant. It was another little Negro." Where's that guy? Where's too tight? Where's too tight, Leroy Collins? Yeah, Emmett Till's dad's story is just unbelievable, man. That the story of Emmett Till's dad is just insane. We ain't gonna get into that yet. That's a whole nother story.